Hi, and welcome to Wednesday with Wayne. You may not be aware of this, but I drive a 2010 white Mitsubishi Lancer. And when I bought that car, I've had it for about seven years. When I bought it, I drove the car salesman mad. I told him I wanted the hatchback. And so he'd show me a hatchback and he was trying to talk to me about the features of the car and the make of the car and everything. I, I just, they were secondary issues to me. I would go straight around, open up the boot and have a look in and go, nah, I don't like it. For me, the primary issue was, could I fit my push bike in the back so I could go for a ride with my mate? That was my issue. Anyway, that car's proved to be a great car. It's just the other day I was driving it, it's like a hairy goat. I was putting petrol in, I always checked the oil. It just was going horrible, so I booked it in for service. I was amazed when it came out of that service, the car is fantastic. The fuel efficiency has gone right through the roof. We should have done it earlier. It seems to me, sometimes our souls need to tune up, just like our cars need to tune up. Our souls, and uh, when they serviced my car, the filters, my air filters were all clogged. And they needed to be replaced. And the spark just wasn't happening with the spark plugs the way it should. Sometimes that happens with our souls. The world affects us and we get clogged and dirtied by the world and we lose our spark. If that resonates with you, if you sometimes feel like the, the spark's gone out of your Christian walk, I wanna share with you a few ways that you can get that spark back, get that efficiency back. Now it's not an exhaustive list, but here's a few things I found to be very, very helpful. And for, for, I don't know about you, but huge chunks of my life get devoted to personal pleasure and that personal pleasure sometimes trumps my soul or my God time. You go, what do you mean? Well, you get an invitation. It's a Sunday morning to a party. You have a choice. Do I choose going to church and worshiping together? Good for my soul. Or do I go to the party and have a good time? Good for my flesh. I'm not saying going to a party is a sin, but you know, it doesn't feed your soul. It's amazing how many times we'll just go, well, I'll just watch church online. And truth is when we watch church online, we hit the fast forward button half the time. It's not the same as being with God's people. I know this, if you allow worship time, your God time, soul feeding to trump personal pleasure, it will do wonders for your soul. Try it sometime. Secondly, give someone or some cause that's got a need in such a way they'll never know it's you, you don't get a benefit from it, and uh, someone gets blessed from it. Do it anonymously. Not only do you make an investment in eternity, it refreshes your soul. It's one of those cures to self-centeredness and self-centeredness just erodes away at our soul. You know, you get a car and you put it beside the ocean. What happens? The salt air just puts rust in the metal. The same thing happens when we allow self-centeredness, it'll erode our soul. So do something to strengthen your soul and give to someone in need or give to a, a godly cause. Finally, get someone to pray for you. The Apostle Paul uh, had this guy who'd mentored, his name was Timothy. Uh, we're not too sure, but he was getting intimidated by life. Uh, he felt overwhelmed by the demands of life. So Paul gave him this timely advice. He said, hey, Paul, Timothy, get some godly people, get them to lay hands on you and stir up the gifts that are within you. We're gonna be doing that this Sunday. We're gonna be preaching from Psalm 23. End of the service, we're gonna allow people, not backslidden, not walking away from God, just get that spark back. We're gonna restore something in their lives by laying hands on them and stirring up what's been dormant for far too long. Well, that's my thoughts for Wednesday, Wayne. A couple of quick announcements. I wanna thank everyone for their incredible generosity. We have all the funds we now need for Peter, our new youth pastor. He'll be starting, I think it's either right at the end of this month or the, like the first day of the next month. So we're really looking forward to Peter coming on board. Talk about soul refreshing. Not this Friday night, but the following Friday night, there'll be a praise and worship night at church. Terry and her husband, Paul, will be leading that up. It'll do wonders for your soul. Come along, I think it starts at 7.30. So not this Friday, the following Friday. One last thing, youth is back on this Friday night at seven o'clock. Hey, God bless, I'm looking forward to seeing you this Sunday.